Today, we are playing Catan Legend of the Sea Robbers, Chapter 1. Uh, how Legend of the Sea Robbers works is there's not an actual winner after each chapter. You must play all four chapters to determine the winner. So there's, in the instruction book, there's a scorecard. You write down your score at the end of each chapter, and then you carry on that score to the next chapter and continue from there. At the end of the fourth chapter, whoever has the highest score wins Legend of the Sea Robbers. So to play Legend of the Sea Robbers, you must have both the Catan, regular game, and Seafarer's Expansion. You cannot play Legend of the Sea Robbers without the Seafarer's Expansion. Just to point out why, there are 15 sea hexes right there that Lily's going to point to. That's from the Seafarer's Expansion. There are also extra deserts from the Seafarer's Expansion. And there are extra land hexes. You'll also use boats or ships from seafarers. However, each player in chapter one will only get five ships. You are limited to five in chapter one. For the edge pieces from seafarers, you will need a double expander, two single expanders, and the edge. From regular Catan, you will need four of the edge pieces just flipped over so that they are strictly water. Also from Seafarers, you will need the Catan chits. And everything else you see on the table is from the regular Catan, the base game. You will use the largest army and the longest road. If you have Traitors and Barbarians, there are no harbors in this game, so you cannot use Harbor Master. In front of me is what is new from the Sea Robbers expansion box. There are these three edges that you will need. This one is very similarly shaped to the Seafarers. These two here are important because in Legend of the Sea Robbers, you do not keep track of victory points in your head. You will actually use the marker to move up in the game for your victory points. Like so. The robber at the beginning of the game is placed above the four. And the reason that this is significant is because when you roll a seven, you will move it onto a land hex just like normal and steal from that person. However, anybody whose token is on the four, three, two, one, which wouldn't happen, you cannot place the robber on them. Their token must be beyond the four before you may place the robber on that person. The other things that are new in um, Legend of the Sea Robber, there are these little things here. They kind of look like crew members if, you, if you've played Explorers and Pirates. They are called units. So in each of the chapters, they will represent something different. In chapter one, these are the ore miners. There is also this pyramid, that is an outpost. Outposts are placed on the coast only. And in each chapter, there's different places where you can place the coast. Once we set up the map, I'll show you where the, co uh, where the outposts can be placed. They are worth one victory point. They do not produce resources and they do not follow distancing rules. 
So normally on a hex, you have to leave two roads between each. Pass me a settlement. Because they do not follow distancing rules, you can place a settlement right there. These four tokens here are used on the board to represent where you can place coastal settlements. This will come in once we set up the board. These are treasure chests. You find these using your ships. If your ship touches one of these treasure chests, it's yours. You pick it up and you keep it in front of you. You may not exchange that chest as soon as you find it. It must be exchanged on a later turn. So the different things that you can find in chests are a free development card, a resource, one resource of your choice, or build a free road or ship. So again, that can be used, it can be saved and used on one of your next turns. These are mission cards. So there's individual mission cards and then there is a mission card here that everybody can see, but they basically same, say the same thing. When you build an outpost, you get a friend card. In chapter one, which we are playing, these are castaway tokens. The first person to gather three castaway tokens gets two victory points. And every subsequent player after that, that gets to three castaway tokens will get one victory point. And those are represented by the Catan chits. I'll explain finding ore once we are set up. It will make more sense. Friend cards. So once you build your outpost, there are four friend cards to choose from. You do not have to choose blindly. If you are the first to build an outpost, you get to choose which friend you want. Each friend has an advantage. You may use your friend twice during the game. So if I choose Captain Dever, when you use a chest, take one additional resource of your choice. So let's say I use a chest, take a resource, you flip it over to represent that you've used it once. When you use a chest, take an additional resource of your choice. So I would do it a second time on another turn. Once you've used your friend two times, they are discarded from the game. These here are the cost building cards. Outposts are worth two lumber, one sheep. An ore miner, the units here, you must have one castaway token. For each castaway token, up to three, you will get another ore miner. To move your ore miner, we'll cover that later, it would cost a wheat or a sheep. The castaway tokens, let me share a little bit more about the castaway tokens. So, like I said, you must have three and no more than three so that you can use your ore miners. They are placed on the board like so, with little people and a fire. On the other side, it shows how much that castaway token is worth. So to purchase this castaway token, you would have to pay two bricks. They are all different. I'll show more about the castaway tokens after we've set up the board. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll explain the rest of the game.
the board and we have set it up pretty much exactly like it says in the book. The only difference that you'll notice is as a family, we don't play with twos and twelves. So we replaced the two and the twelve with a, I think it was a four and a nine, if I'm correct. Um, so major changes. In this seafarers, you may place two boats, two ships on a shipping route but they cannot be your own boat, okay? So I cannot place two blues on a shipping route. No, 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 okay? But you can share shipping routes. The next one, there are no harbors, therefore the base trade is three to one. Uh, lastly, this is uh, to start. Everybody starts with three settlements. One of the settlements must be placed on the coast. And these gray spots represent where you must place your coastal settlement. Coastal settlements are built first and then you build inland after that. Out here with the rock and the desert, this is called the barren island. You may not build settlements or roads on the barren island. So how do you get ore, you may ask? By using your outposts. So, choose this for my settlement and then I build my five ships if I get a chest I take it it's mine once I get to the barren island I build my outpost that's the pyramid that's a victory point. It does not produce ore. Remember, they do not produce resources. Once I have built my outpost, I get a friend card. There, right here. We talked about those already. The other thing about having an outpost is at the beginning of your turn, before before you pick up resources, before you trade or build or anything, the first thing you will do is take a peek at one of these castaway tiles. You can do that once at the beginning of every turn. And remember, underneath these castaway tiles shows you how much they cost. So you take a peek at it. If you have those resources in your hand, you might as well purchase it. You pay for it, you purchase it, and you place it underneath your coastal settlement. If you do not have what it says, that's okay. Place it back and carry on with your turn. But let's say I was able to pay for it and I put it under my settlement back on the mainland. As soon as I place that on the mainland, I place one unit. Let's say I get another one. I add it underneath. Again, there's number two. And I get my second ore miner. So that's kind of how that works. Now, those ore miners are going to go get your ore. So you may pay, as you can see right here on this card, one wheat or one sheep moves your ore miner to your outpost. So I pay my wheat, doo -doo -doo -doo. and I'll pay another wheat. Doo -doo -doo. Now they're both out at the ore. 
I'll finish my turn and continue. On my next turn, I can cash in my ore miners for one rock. So I will take a rock and add it to my hand and move one of my ore miners back. I can do it again right away if I want, but if I only need one rock, that's all I need. But let's go ahead, I'm gonna take another rock and move this ore miner back. That's how you get rock in the game, your ore miners. Don't forget, everybody, keeps track of their victory points, not in their head, but on the track over here. And that is the basis of chapter one, Legend of the Sea Robber. So, next I'm going to show placement. So the order, remember there's every player will place three settlements. The first one will be on the coast. So. We're going to go ahead and roll to see who goes first. Mom got a four. Kids are going first. So we're going to lay out the order right along the ocean. So kids would place a settlement, followed by dad, followed by mom, and then mom, and then dad, and then kids. And then kids. Settlement. And then dad. And then mom. This is going to be kind of a hybrid between the explorers and pirates part of it. We kind of like the way it worked. So in normal Catan, in normal seafarers, you place the road along with your settlement. Now, Explorers and Pirates is a little bit different and we ended up liking that way the best. So after I've placed my last settlement, I will place a ship on my coast and my two roads. Then dad will place his ship and two roads and then the kids will place their ship and two roads. And what this does is it kind of allows people to make the decision on the direction of the roads after all the settlements have been placed. Um, so that was kind of a fun, different rule that we found in Explorers and Pirates and we just kind of have carried it on from here. So. We're going to continue. We're going to play chapter one, Legend of the Sea Robbers. Let's see who wins.
Mum won. The victory points needed for Chapter 1 Legend of the Sea Robber is 11 points. So, one for the outpost. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten for the longest road. Eleven, because I was the second person to get three castaways. So that was the eleventh point. This was just a night. Um, so now, what you want to do, so I'm not the winner per se. On the back of the instruction booklet, this is where you keep track of your points so that you can carry on through chapter four to see who is the winner. Now, what I did, I don't want to wreck the, chat, uh, the instruction book, so I just made something here. So what you do is you write down the victory points of every person. So, mom had 11, the kids had seven, dad had 10. And then you also write down how many castaways everybody was able to take. So mom took three, dad took three, and the kids took two. I'm going to keep this in the instruction booklet so that we can transfer it next time we play when we play chapter two. So that's it, Legend of the Sea Robbers, chapter one, lots of new stuff. Um, but overall, everybody really liked the game around here. It was a really great expansion. Um, and so many different things that you could add to any of the other expansions. So stay tuned because when we're done Chapter 4, we're going to start adding um, Catan combos to our YouTube channel. And so we might, um, so we might combine, let's say... Fog Islands with Traders and Barbarians. And there are key aspects even to this Chapter 1 Legend of the Sea Robber that you can add to some of the other scenarios in the Catan universe. Um, outposts and Castaways, that was pretty simple. It's another way to get victory points. The chest great way to get a little bit extra when you're taking your ships out. Things like that. So stay tuned for Catan Combos and for Chapter 2 of Legend of the Sea Robber. And until then, keep playing and have fun!